I've got an activity for you today. In fact, you can do this while you're eating your Thanksgiving Day leftovers. I know Thanksgiving was a while ago, but chances are you still have some turkey left over. You can make some turkey salad, and of course, probably a pumpkin pie or two if you're lucky. But while you're eating those leftovers, I want you to make your Guitar Geek wish list because the holidays are right around the corner, and I am here today to help you with that very task. I have selected 10 accessories that I've featured from past Acoustic Tuesday episodes that you no doubt need on your list. And I'm gonna do this in chunks because, well, it's much easier to do this in chunks. In fact, I've got some themed chunks. And this first chunk is just general accessories, things that every guitar geek needs. So we're gonna start out with numbers 10 through seven on our holiday gift guide countdown. And coming in at number 10 is Native Suns Straps. These straps are the most well-made straps I've ever encountered. In fact, I will claim that they are the best cloth strap on the market in terms of aesthetic, in terms of durability, and in terms of functionality. Let me show you my favorite strap from them. It is their new three inch strap, the Hemp Backing. Uh, I can't say enough good things about these straps. I featured them way back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 67. And then they were only doing the two inch straps. Since then, they've upgraded to these three inch straps and these make a perfect acoustic guitar strap. And when I said functionally, what I meant was when you choose the hemp backing instead of the nylon backing, it actually grabs hold of your shirt so that the guitar doesn't move around while you while you have the strap on it. Plus, the ends are super burly, super tough, made incredibly well. Not only are they, not only are they stitched, but they're also riveted as well. And you've got some wonderful designs to choose from. They just released these new kind of uh, I'll call them uh, southwestern kind of inspired themes. And uh, they've got some more classic themes too. This is one of their two inch straps. Uh, it's kind of like a roses theme and I've, they've got everything from uh, kind of paisley patterns to kind of filigree type things. But I gotta tell you, this type of strap, this strap, the Native Sun strap needs to be on your list. In fact, I think I feel so strongly about this strap. I contacted the folks at Native Suns and they were so kind in giving all of you Acoustic Tuesday viewers a discount code. Yes, you can get 15% off your strap purchase if you just enter the promo code ACOUSTIC15 and that's all through the month of December. And one more thing, and the reason why they made the gift guide is that, <clears throat> excuse me, they are so well packaged you really don't even have to wrap these things. Uh, they're just packaged in this nice uh, kind of uh, uh, craft paper and they just look so kind. They're just perfect for under the, under the tree. So Native Sun Straps coming in at number 10. Next up on our list are Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension Strings coming in at number nine. Yes, these strings, I tried, God, some time ago, I wanna say maybe a year and a half ago. I mean, I featured them way back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 12 and they blew me away then and they continue to blow me away. But here's the thing. I tried these strings out because Carolyn, hi Carolyn, uh, over at Santa Cruz Guitars, uh, she sent me a set of strings to, to you know, put through its paces. So I tried them out and I loved them. But then I continued to try out other strings because as a guitar geek, you're always searching for the best tone. I have still to date not found a set of strings that I like better. Now I'd like some other strings. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying Santa Cruz are the end all be all strings, but I will tell you this, they offer clarity, balance and articulation like no other string I've tried. And they actually last a good long time. Now currently we're working on a promo code. I don't have it yet but it will be along the lines of buy one, get one free. So I'll reveal that code on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And of course, I will update the gift guide on AcousticLife.tv once I do get that promo code so we can all reap the Guitar Geek benefits. And of course, if you want access to the Guitar Geek gift guide for 2019, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT119. All right, next up on our list. Now, every guitar player needs a pick. This pick that I'm about to share with you is extremely special. So coming in at number eight are blue chip picks. Now these picks run anywhere between $40 to $60, $65, $70 per pick, but it's money well spent. 
I tried these picks out. Gosh, uh, Trey Hensley and Rob Ikes were in town, and Trey uh, Trey let me play his Henderson guitar, which was awesome. And I didn't have a pick on me. He had a blue chip pick on him, so I used his pick, and I was immediately just infatuated with this pick, not only because of the tone, but because of the feel. And my favorite blue chip is the TAD-1R. It's a, it's a little bit of a thicker pick, uh, in terms of its if its actual size and in terms of its thickness, I like the 80 thickness. Uh, so it's a pretty substantial pick, but I absolutely love it. I bought three of them and I still have those three. I haven't lost them because here's a catch. When you spend 60 bucks on a pick, you generally don't lose it. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I think it's kind of a built-in insurance policy. When you spend that much on a pick, you're much more cautious about where it actually ends up. So please add blue chip picks to your uh, Guitar Geek wish list. I think you will be very, very happy that you did so. In fact, uh, between the tone and between the overall feel of the pick, um, they're, they are top notch. They're, I don't think there's anything else that even compares to them. And I'm even talking about actual tortoiseshell picks. I know some might say, <gasps> but I'm, I'm telling you, these picks are the real deal. All right, next up on our list, and the last for this little ch this little segment that we're doing at the top, uh, is sometimes, you know, when you're playing with your pick, it spins, it doesn't feel solid in your fingers, and it just overall feels, well, slippery. So I introduce to you item number seven on our gift giving guide. It's Picker's Grip. Picker's Grip is a company that is making, well, a grip for your pick. It's an all natural pick grip that is not messy. It's easy to use and I use it on my blue chip picks religiously and I absolutely love it. It, come, it comes in little plastic tins and I keep it with all my picks and I absolutely, it makes, it makes using a pick extremely enjoyable and I get very confident when I use it because I know that the pick is there and I know it's not going anywhere. I know it's not gonna spin. I know it's not gonna fall out of my hands. It's really easy to apply. You put like three little dabs on the pick, work it in with your thumb and, and forefinger and all of a sudden you've got this wonderful tacky surface that's not messy. That's the key point. I used to use violin rosin and it was so messy and so sticky. Pretty soon it was on the face of my guitar. It was all over my fingers. My fingers were sticky. I would touch things and dust and dirt would stick to them. I don't like that. Uh, Picker's Grip does not offer that. It, Picker's Grip is super clean. It's easy to use as I mentioned. And I also have to say, if you want to do a little bit more of a deep dive on them, I featured them way back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 64. And the folks at Picker's Grip, when I reached out and said, hey, I'd love to include you guys on the gift guide, what do you think? Well, they were happy and they wanted to thank all of you Acoustic Tuesday viewers and say, you know what? I'm gonna give you not only free shipping on your order, but 25% off your order. So if you order anything from Picker's Grip, please enter the code TONY25 and you will receive a wonderful discount of 25% off your order and your pick will never spin again, I promise you. So pretty exciting stuff. And just a quick recap for our first chunk of the gift giving guide, coming in at number 10, we had Native Sun Straps, coming in at number nine, Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension Strings, number eight, Blue Chip Picks, and number seven, Picker's Grip. Now to get the full gift guide and the promo codes, I don't expect you to remember all these, just visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT119. Okay, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, we had a look at some guitar gratitude. We went on a documentary bonanza. We went down to Las Vegas for the Heartbreaker Guitars News Report, and we listened to the White Buffalo. This week on Acoustic Tuesday, we've already, sh we've already started our shopping spree for the holiday season. We're gonna listen to the Dead Tongues, and I'm gonna share with you a must read, must get guitar book that you probably haven't heard of yet, and you're going to learn about a new guitar, and the folks from Las Vegas are going to tell us all about it. All that's coming up right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 119. This is the show where you're going to learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm going to share with you my guitar geek list for the week. But before we dive into that, before we continue on our holiday shopping spree, Got some Guitar Geek trivia for you. Here is your question. Which of the following methods of abuse slash accident have the Martin D28 formerly owned by Clarence White, currently owned by Tony Rice, been subject to? 
A, shot by a pellet gun, B, run over by a car, C, caught in a flood, or D, fallen off of a stage. Go ahead and ponder that little harrowing tale of guitar abuse, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, I actually have another question for you today, and this comes in the form of our What Do You Think segment, and this one, I gotta tell you, we talked about guitar gratitude last week, and it got me thinking. I thought, gosh, you know, one of the things that I've always wanted to know from you guitar geeks is, what is one guitar player, living or dead, that if you could wave a magic wand, you'd be able to have a lesson with right now, this very second. Now, while you're thinking, I want you to take a look at a video that I found that I think sums up the magic that can happen when an older generation guitarist communicates, teaches, plays with a younger generation guitarist. So I found this video of Etta Baker and Kenny Wayne Shepherd playing together, talking together, and I just, I, I thought it was pure magic. And I wanted you to see it because hopefully it gets your creative juices and your thinking guitar geek juices flowing. So here's that clip. And peep over when I was three years old to see where he was noting and putting his fingers. And I just felt so close to my dad. I wanted to be a little closer to him than his guitar was. So I'd peep over and see the note where he was putting his fingers. And then he set me up in the middle of the bed and laid the little guitar across my lap and I placed each finger on each string where he had his. And I could do my basic chords three when I was three. The sound of anything tuning up gives me happiness. <laughs> Cause I like the happy blues. I like the kind of music, uh, blues music and all that my dad played because it's a happy sound. And I noticed a lot of blues, it's sad. But my dad always said the Piedmont blues had a happy sound. It's a little faster blues than the, the Delta blues. And it's, I find a lot of cheerfulness in the, in the blues in the Piedmont. I should thank you for doing this. I, I enjoy it. Well, I really appreciate it. I love your music. Well, thank you. I really enjoy yours, too. I mean, it's pure magic to actually see that, to see the to see Etta Baker talking to Kenny Wayne Shepherd and this mutual admiration for one another, but also to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd really just, just pay respect to one of the kind of, um, uh, what was I going to say? One of the... Um, kind of front-running ladies of the blues, and, and such different styles, too. So, again, that begs the question, what is one guitarist, who is one guitarist, that, living or dead, that you could have a lesson with? What, pick one guitarist, living or dead, that you could have a lesson with, and go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Uh, I, I'm gonna read these on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, and I cannot wait to see your answers. And I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't share who my guitar player was. Of all the guitar players, living or dead, that I could have a lesson with, and man, this, this takes a while to think about. I'm going to pick Kelly Joe Phelps. Um, I think Kelly Joe Phelps just, he, he embodies everything that I love about music. He's one of those performers that is just in the moment all the time. He's one of those performers that knows his instrument incredibly well. He's one of those performers that um, just gets lost in the music itself. And I think that very thing is, is what I would want to uh, learn from him. Not that you could necessarily teach it. However, I think he would be a, a fun hang and uh, somebody that that would um, would be uh, just a treat to spend some time with. Again, just kind of that uh, paying paying respect to your guitar heroes, if you will. So again, leave that in the comments below. I can't wait to read your answers. Now, coming up, I've got, uh, we've got to finish our holiday gift guide. I've still got a whole bunch of things for you and even some promo codes coming up, some interesting things that I've got in store for you viewers. Uh, but I found this book uh, via Luthier Jason Costell. He made a Facebook post uh, some weeks ago, and I, I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I want this book. What? How do I get this book? So I went on this mad Google search for this book. Couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Then I finally did. Let me show it to you. It is a behemoth of a book. It is entitled, 
The Devil is In It by John Stubbings. Now, this book came overseas. Uh, it's only in print overseas, and I found it through the North American Guitar, and I'm so happy that the North American Guitar exists because they produce some amazing content. They have exposed me to some wonderful things, both luthiers and products, and this is certainly one of them. Uh, written by John Stubbings, The Devil Is In It is a fascinating book. This is a first edition. There's only 300 first edition books in print, and along with the book came this wonderful note from John, the author. He says, Dear Tony, thank you for buying The Devil Is In It. Your copy is individually uh, numbered, and it is 24 of 300. Please let me know if you enjoy it. Well, so far, so good, John. I just got it. I couldn't wait to share it with you, so I haven't gotten all the way through it. Um, but I've put a good substantial dent in it. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, you order this book from the UK. It's a first edition book. It's it's pretty costly. I'll get to that in a second. But how does it arrive? I mean, is it does it just do they throw it in an envelope and it gets all dented and battered? No, no, no. They they actually take very good care of it. It's in a custom box, and uh, there's a there's a quick little description video of the book that will give you much more than just looking at it here. So uh, here is John going through the book and its special appointments. So this is the slipcase covered in linen um, with a debossed central panel to take the Drew Christie cover art. Again, that's printed on uh, art quality paper, um, exactly the thickness of the debossing and it's individually glued into this, the slipcase. And then the slipcase has got foil block titling on the outside, which is echoed by the actual book that's inside. So the book comes in a tray. So this book is brilliantly packaged. As I, as I said before, it's a first edition, so it's a fairly costly book, but I, I will say this, I think it is extremely well worth the investment uh, because it is a special piece of acoustic guitar geekism that we all need to know about. In fact, with the first edition, you get standalone illustrations from the author. Now, I know I can't see these. In fact, I'm a little bit skittish of revealing them. You can see them uh, by checking out the full video, the full unboxing video at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT119. But this thing has it all. All the things that guitar geeks want from a finely artisanally made book to just these, these extra illustrations to the slipcase itself, it's gorgeous. And I have to say this, I had never heard of John Stubbings before. I, I didn't know he was an author, but I was happy to find an interview that the North American Guitar did with him. And after this interview, it's a full half hour interview. This will be just a, sh a short snippet. But, but after watching this interview, first of all, I felt like I knew John. And secondly, I just thought, wow, this guy is a guitar geek through and through. And I'm happy to report that because I think only a guitar geek could write a book of this caliber and he did a great job. So here's a little snippet of that interview with John from the North American Guitar. I started trying to thinking, how is it that this fantastic instrument has got such a hold over people, this obsessive mm. collecting? And it is different from any other instrument. Mm. There's, you know, you do, when you meet clarinet players or saxophone players, they might have a few, but they don't have the number that, that many guitarists have. And the guitar seems to have this ability to turn a player into an accidental collector. Mm. And they're obviously, you go onto YouTube, they're, you know, you, if you key in um, Billy Connolly, guitar collector, <laughs> cracking video, this guy who's got a warehouse, and you go in room after room full of guitars. He goes into one room, literally stacked up sideways, because, and it's a biggish room, about the size of your showroom here, completely water ceiling of Fender Coronados. A guitar that Fender still make. It's not like they're particularly rare. And he must have had 200, of which 50 were the same colour. And, you, and OK, you say, well, he's a bit ill, isn't he, or something. But it's quite normal for people to have enormous collections. And it's this sort of obsessive nature and also the secretive nature of it. So I, I wanted to understand a bit about that. And that then led me to sort of try and understand sort of how did the guitar sort of some, somehow become 
the the instrument that it is today. The in, incredibly important instrument. It's iconic. It, it democratized music making. Unlike well, more than any other Absolutely. instrument, yeah. it's you know it has an impact on social history, civil rights. Certainly, if you look at America, on politics, on the economy, on the way that society developed. All right, to catch that full interview and to learn more about The Devil Is In It book, please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT119. There's a link to the unboxing video. There's a link to that full interview. And if you have about a half an hour of your time, please check it out. Uh, it's well worth your watch because it is just, it's funny and it gives you a little bit of insight into how much of a guitar geek John truly is. And then lastly, I mentioned that the price is, is pretty steep. And for a book, I think it is. Um, I think with shipping, it was about 250 to 300 and I can't remember the exact total, uh, but I remember hesitating to buy it. But once I received it, I had no hesitation. Uh, upon opening it, upon feeling the pages, on, upon feeling just the, the almost the guitar geek mojo in the book, uh, I thought it was well worth it. And I thought, you know, this is a perfect episode to include this book on because you know, it didn't make the holiday gift giving guide, but we can call it an honorary member of the holiday gift giving guide. Uh, it's a it's a stellar book, and uh, I want to thank Jason Costell for posting about it on Facebook because that's where I heard about it. And then I want to thank John Stubbings uh, for just uh, uh, pouring his his heart, his guitar geek heart, into uh, this this tome, if you will. A fantastic book. Again, to learn more about it, AcousticLife.tv forward slash at one one nine. Well, gosh, we got to pick up back on our holiday gift giving guide. And uh, we'll call this the electronics portion of the holiday gift giving guide. We're going to hit numbers six, five, and four. And coming in at number six, we've got the Tonewood Amp. The Tonewood Amp is a magic inspiration box, if you will. It attaches to the back of your guitar. And without plugging your guitar into an amp, plugging it through effects pedals and all that garbage, you actually have effects right there on your guitar. You can still sit on the porch and reap the benefit of playing through effects. This this amp is, I call it an amp because it's the Tonewood amp, but it's, it's not like, when I think of amp, I think of lugging this big heavy thing around. It's not heavy at all. It's actually quite tiny. I featured it on the Guitars for Vets uh, live fundraiser that we did, and I also featured it on Acoustic Tuesday episode 70. So make sure to check those resources out to do a little bit of a deeper dive. And I'll have you know this, I'm working on a promo code with Tonewood Amp. In fact, I've been emailing back and forth with them, and I should have one by week's end. So make sure to check the holiday gift guide for your very special Acoustic Tuesday promo code from Tonewood Amp, uh, a very cool tool. In fact, I think it makes practice sessions that much more fun when you have those effects on board your acoustic guitar. And speaking of effects, that actually brings me to number five on our holiday gift giving guide, and that is the LR Bags Align series of effects pedals. For those of you who like pedals, for those of you who like plugging your guitar through a bunch of different pedals, and I, I guess I could say that I'm one of those now. Uh, I've started my foray into effects pedals on acoustic guitar, and I'm really enjoying it. But what I'm finding is, the ones that are made for electric guitar work fine on acoustic guitar, but they, they don't seem as friendly to figure out. However, the LR Bags Align series of pedals is really easy for a guy like me, who's a bit of a tech um, uh, dullard, if you will. <laughs> it's, it's much easier for me to figure these out. Plus, they look stellar. They look beautiful. They, they look like they belong with an acoustic guitar. My favorite LR Bags pedal is by far the delay. Uh, one of the things that drives me nuts about delay pedals is all the different parameters and all the things that generally confuse me. I don't want to think about it. Uh, that's not the case with the LR Bags Align series. Uh, this delay, you just literally, it's plug and play. Um, you plug it in, mess with some knobs, find a cool sound, and away you go. Now, I feature those pedals back on Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 68. Uh, so make sure to check, the, check that episode out for a deep dive. And of course, you can learn more about these pedals and of course, their position on the holiday gift guide at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT11. One, nine. Now, rounding out our electronics section, coming in at number four, is a DI that actually works. And when I say this is I've tried a lot of different DIs. I love a lot of different DIs. LR Bags Session DI, LR Bags Paracoustic DI, um, the Venue DI. I mean, I've tried a bunch of different DIs. I like the Fishman Aura. I like the Envy Tone Model Duo, specific for that pickup. But this DI has it all. And I say that, and I don't say that lightly because I've, like I said, I've tried a lot of them out. Uh, the Fishman Platinum Pro EQ. It's a very simple DI. 
it has a tuner on it. And you know what? The tuner actually works. The tuner is sensitive enough to pick up your guitar and it's accurate. It's actually accurate. Every other DI slash tuner combination I've found has always fallen short in the tuner department. In fact, to the degree where I've had just an extra tuner, an extra pedal tuner next to the DI because I just don't trust the, the tuner on the DI. That's not the case with the Fishman Platinum Pro EQ. I love the tuner. It's got a boost on it. It's got an easily, easily operable effects section. Uh, I'm sorry, not effects section, EQ section. It has an effects loop. And it's, it's actually, it's like, it's like a Swiss Army Knife DI, but it's not complicated. That's one of the things I like about it. You look at it and you think, okay, I know what this does. This is, this is easy to use. And the tuner works. And again, that's the Fishman Platinum Pro EQ. I haven't reviewed it yet on Acoustic Tuesday, but a little birdie told me that it's, it'll be coming up shortly. Uh, this DI has impressed me so much. I want you all to know about it. And that's why it's on our holiday gift giving guide. So just a quick recap of our electronics section coming in at six, the Tonewood amp coming in at five, the LR bags, Align series of effects pedals and coming in at number four, the Fishman Platinum Pro EQ DI. Now I want to visit some comments from uh, episode number 116, some lively discussion and some wonderful small wins and just overall awesome guitar geek occurrences. Our first comment comes from Daddyo307 and he says this, Hey Tony, just got a great double small win last night. First, my wife actually let me take the night off of work to go to a show, a miracle in itself. Secondly, I got a chance to see none other than Jerry Douglas at Fitzgerald's in Berwyn, Illinois. Tony, you gotta know about this place. Nice, intimate venue. Not only was the show spectacular, Jerry was playing his resonator with the adjustable bridge. What a trip, it was amazing. And that's not all. I got a chance to meet him afterwards and in the span of a few short minutes, managed to congratulate him on a great show, ask how it was touring with Tommy Emanuel, ask if he saw the Billy Strings slash Tommy Emanuel video that just came out. He didn't see it, he was actually there. And asked about the upcoming transatlantic sessions. This he had time for, even though he just came from playing the CMAs the night before. Crazy. Oh, and probably the best part, I got to see it with a friend who I've known and been playing with for the past 48 years. Nice. Uh, that is just an awesome, awesome occurrence. I love uh, when you're able to go to a show and actually see the artist, talk to the artist, uh, and I'm a huge Jerry Douglas fan, so that's fantastic. Thank you for that comment. Our next comment comes from Enrico F., and he says this. You know you're a guitar geek when you look for an ice scraper in the side pocket of your car door, but all you can find are strings and a string winder. <laughs> I laugh because that's um, that's very real thing. So Enrico, you indeed are a guitar geek. Next up, Kevin W. He's got a small win because of a new guitar day. He got to go to the Taylor Roadshow last night. Great time had by all. Also, he purchased a Taylor E14 CE limited edition ebony back and sides. Looks and sounds sweet. Thanks, Tony, for another great show as always. Well, thank you, Kevin, and congratulations on your new guitar. Our next comment comes from Rick M. Wow, Tony. Now, this is in reference to a conversation I had about not really knowing my geography at all. He says, wow, Tony. Y'all really need to head south sometime. Alabama has over 77,000 miles of rivers. I believe that's the most rivers per square mile of any state. As an aside, let me clear up a question you had from several episodes ago. L period, A period is Los Angeles. L, A, no space, is Louisiana. And L space, A is lower Alabama, which is generally understood to include the Florida panhandle. Well, I feel a little bit more geographically in touch. Thank you for that, Rick. Our next comment comes from Max H. This was in response to the crazy grain versus straight grain uh, question I posed. And he, he says this, in the words of Ozzy, crazy grain. I like the look and give it to me on the front too. Uh, well, thank you, Max H, for including a wonderful little um, twist of a lyric there. I really dig that. Next comment comes from Stephen B. Great episode. I actually read an interview with Dana Bourgeois. Pretty sure it was on his website. He felt that in some cases, flat sawn is preferred because it has a higher sound velocity than quarter sawn. He specifically mentioned Brazilian rosewood. But he prefaced, the, he prefaced that with the fact that flat sawn wood is more prone to cupping, cracking, etc. So it has to be carefully selected and handled. 
Oh, and the top, Sanwood, is actually Riftson, not Quarterson. Riftson has the annular rings at about 45 degrees versus 90 degrees in Quarterson. And that's Steve from Brazoria, Texas. Thank you for that, Steve. That uh, flat sawn versus quarter sawn, crazy grain versus straight grain actually created quite the discussion. Uh, so I was pretty happy with the things that I learned, even from uh, the comments back and forth. And then our last comment of the day comes from Eric E. This is in reference to our live Guitars for Vets fundraiser that we did. And he says this, great show last night, Tony. Thanks so much for the shout out and for helping me see that the guitar community as a whole has saved my life but I still say you're the driving force. Well, thank you, Eric E., and, and uh, thank you for being part of that very Guitar Geek community. It's pretty awesome that, uh, that your guitar journey is here with us. You're a Guitar Geek, and uh, you're just part of, the, you're part of the fan. So we appreciate the comments of, from everybody. Uh, it's so great to hear from you all, and so great to um, just kind of see what's buzzing around your Guitar Geek brains. All right, coming up. Wow, oh, we're just, we're cruising along. I've got an artist coming to you that actually was recommended by another artist we featured on Acoustic Tuesday. I've got some uh, mailbag arrivals, just a, just a little thing. And of course your trivia answer, but I think we should head down to Las Vegas. There's a new guitar that uh, was released by the Larivé company. And one that I think all of us acoustic guitar geeks might be salivating over, but I'll let Brendan tell you all about it. Thanks, Tony. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Brendan and Toby the Beagle reporting live from the front lines of Acoustic Tuesday and bringing to you da 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 the heartbreaker of the month. Guys, we got something really cool and new to show you for the heartbreaker of the month. Check it out. Okay, normally for the heartbreaker of the month, we usually pick something out of our inventory that's exotic, that's unique, that's sometimes very expensive, but this one is quite different. And the reason is because it's very special. It just got released. It's the Tommy Emanuel Larave guitar. Okay guys, as mentioned, not a whole lot of bling, but we got a whole lot of tone going on with this thing. Okay, this is it. This is the Larave Tommy Emanuel guitar. Okay, so the story goes, uh, Jean Larave and Tommy Emanuel, they go way back. He built a guitar for Tommy Emanuel about 20 years ago, and it can be heard on many of his recordings over the last couple of decades. And the guitar is phenomenal. It was a C10. Now this guitar, this, this the Larave guitar, is a CO3, which is based on the C10. The only difference is, it doesn't have a lot of the bling and bindings that some of the more fancy Tommy Emanuel guitar had. But what it does have, it's got the same tone woods, it's got the same specs, it's got the exact same body geometry. So it's essentially the same guitar. And one of the reasons is Tommy Emanuel was real clear about the fact he wanted to make this an affordable guitar. And that's exactly what it is at $21.95. $21.95, and wait till you guys hear this thing. Okay, so let's look at a couple of the specs on this. We got a Florentine cutaway. Sitka spruce, that's Indian rosewood, mahogany neck. We got an ebony board, ebony head facing, 12 frets to the body. So what do you say we give this thing a listen? Mike, take it away, my friend. Thanks, Brennan. And here is the Larivé Tommy Emanuel. Okay, as you can see, the Tommy Emanuel shines in finger style. That was a song written by our own Mike Romano in D-A-D-E-A-E -E -E tuning. Guys, thank you so much for watching. 
Tony, you're the man. Guys, that was the Tommy Emanuel guitar by Larabay Guitars. Thanks for watching. This is Toby the Beagle. I'm Brendan. We're in the Heartbreaker Lounge at the back of the store. Sending it back to you, Tony. Guys, have a great day. Guitar geeks, unite! A couple of comments from Brendan here. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to thank Brendan. He, he told me about this guitar some time ago, and I was just kind of drooling, frothing at the mouth, if you will, waiting to hear this thing. So uh, huge thanks to Brendan for letting us get the scoop on it. And also, I got to say, Mike at Heartbreaker Guitars is a phenomenal player. And I, I haven't said this before on the Acoustic Tuesday show for no specific reason, but I'm just sitting there listening to him play, and I'm thinking, gosh... Mike is a fantastic player. I really dig his playing. So that's kind of a two for one special. And another thing about the guitar, you know, I, I am very intrigued by this guitar. And one of the reasons is I usually don't like Florentine cutaways. I just don't like that sharp cutaway. I like smoother lines. I think it works really well on this guitar. And I have to say this guitar gets me excited because I had an, a Larave LO3R some time ago. This was when I first was in uh, college working in, at the music store in Chicago. In fact, I took out a little bit extra on my school loan to buy this guitar. Not recommended uh, for those of you going through school right now. I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm still paying for that guitar uh, that I don't have anymore. But anyways, um, the guitar was great. I sold it for silly reasons and uh, I wish I had it back. But this guitar, in my opinion, resembles that guitar. Not in shape, not, not even in um, the way it looks, but more in the way that it sounds. Uh, so I'm very excited about that guitar and uh, kudos to the folks at Larave for uh, for working with Tommy Emanuel to create a, a, a kind of a more budget artist model. You know, a lot of times we see artist models and they're so expensive because it has an artist's name on it. And, you know, I think it's really, really incredible that Tommy Emanuel said, no, I, I'd like to do this, but I want to make it, um, you know, inexpensive for folks that, you know, can actually, you know, so folks can actually afford it. Now, when I say inexpensive, I don't think twenty one ninety five is necessarily cheap, but compared to other artist models, I think uh, uh, it is. So uh, make sure to check that out. Um, and I, we can call that an honorary member of the Holiday Gift Guide as well. I haven't had my hands on the guitar yet, but everything I've heard about it has been absolutely superb. Speaking of the Holiday Gift Guide, I think we should, I think we should jump back in. In fact, uh, I've got some, this is kind of the catch-all section. Uh, the section that, for that guitar geek that seemingly has everything, or maybe a new guitar player, I've got some great stuff coming your way. So coming in at number three is a product from Orangewood. Now, uh, a couple episodes back on episode 109, I reviewed the Orangewood Sage model from their Highland collection. In fact, I, I kind of gushed over this guitar because I was truly amazed with it. It's the first Orangewood that I've played that really delivered. I mean, I'm talking about bang for the buck. This guitar was amazing. But in fact, I don't actually want to talk about their guitars right now. Although I would consider those for your holiday needs. I do want to talk about this though. And it is the Orangewood Accessory Pack. And for a guitar player on your shopping list, or maybe you're just starting guitar yourself, for 20 bucks, you can get everything that you need. Uh, in it comes... You got a string winder. I got a gush on this string winder, but I'll do that in a second. Uh, you got a clip-on tuner, capo. You get a nice little strap that's actually reinforced. The, the stitching's reinforced on it, so it's not like one of those straps that's gonna fall apart. Uh, pick holder and some picks, a microfiber polishing cloth, and then a quick little chord chart, kind of a quick reference uh, guitar chord chart which is a must for all beginner players. And I just, I was impressed with this because of the price. 20 bucks, you get all that stuff. And I was skeptical, you know, I, I opened it thinking, okay, 20 bucks for all this stuff. I don't know about it. Everything's really nice. Uh, the capo is actually really light and it works well. I used it the, uh, the other night for rehearsal because I couldn't find another capo that I had. Uh, so I used this one, it worked awesome. And the string winder. Okay, let's talk about string winders for a second. I like Jim Dunlop products. However, sometimes their string winders are really sticky and they don't function very well. The handle's kind of short and it feels strange. And this is a geeky thing, but this string winder is super smooth. It's got a longer handle and I really love it. I mean, I would pay 20 bucks just for the string winder. <laughs> and I'm not saying that. This is not, they didn't, nobody paid to be on the holiday gift guide, mind you. Um, I just, this was one of those things that caught me off guard like, wow. 
I wish I could find more string winders just like these. So again, that's the Orangewood uh, accessory pack. It's available for 20 bucks on their website. And as a nice little thank you, the folks at Orangewood sent over a promo code that is usable for any guitar you purchase from them or any ukulele you purchase from them. Upon checkout, uh, just enter the code Tony's Friends. And you'll receive 10% off of your order. Uh, so I want to thank the folks at Orangewood and also thank them for thinking of, of the beginners and what they'd actually need. So make sure to check that out. And like I said before, you know, if, if you have somebody that's just starting guitar on, on your list and maybe they have an instrument already and you're thinking, gosh, what, what do I get them? I don't want to get them all this stuff separately. Uh, this is a great one-stop shop for that. So again, that's the Orangewood Guitars Accessory Pack. All right, next up. Now this is for the guitarist that absolutely has everything and that you might be scared to buy for. Coming in at number two is Music Nomad. I'm talking products as a whole here. Music Nomad, uh, I referenced them back on Acoustic Tuesday episode 101 and I referred to their Acoustalock system, which is a great strap lock system for guitars with a pickup, with an input jack on them, acoustic guitars. Loved it. I thought it worked great. Um, and just a, one of those ingenious things where you're like, somebody finally thought of this. This is brilliant. Um, but their whole entire lineup is dedicated to caring for the guitar that you love, right? So they have polishes, they've got fretboard oil, they've got tools, they've got this cradle cube system that's really incredible. Um, and for the guitarist that has everything, the guitarist that you might be scared to buy something for because they, you know, they're the type that do all their research. They're the type that, you know, that you're, you're just scared to buy something for them because you, you're going to be like, oh, they're, they're probably not going to like this because there's some reason they don't have this. That's not the case here. Uh, I would strongly recommend checking out the Music Nomad site and getting uh, polish, maybe their F1 uh, fingerboard oil, which is awesome, by the way. Um, they've got this, I want to say it's like an octo tool or an octopus tool. Ingenious. And again, that cradle cube I'll cite as a great accessory as well. So they definitely made the list. I think it's a great option to have for, again, that guitar player that seemingly has everything, all the guitars they could ever want. That's not generally true, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, we can all use polish as guitar geeks because we want to keep our guitars in tip top shape and Music Nomad provides the tools and the um, products to do that very thing. Uh, so to access Music Nomad or really anything else I've mentioned on this holiday gift guide so far, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT119. You'll see the full gift guide and then all the promo codes that have been mentioned on today's show and then those other ones that I'm actually still working on. All right, we finally arrived at number one. Coming in at number one is a piece of guitar jewelry, if you will, a functional guitar jewelry. Now you might be thinking, whoa, Tony, you've gone off the deep end. I don't even understand what you're saying right now. Bear with me here. Elliot Capos. Now, Elliot Capos, I've loved for a long time. I bought my first Elliot Capo in, it was my second year at the music store we'll say 2006. I think 2006, I bought my first Elliot Capo. I still have that very Capo 13 years later, and I still love it. It still functions incredibly well. These Capos are built to last. They are, they are, they're art. They're, they're functional art. They're machined to exact specifications for specific guitars in terms of nut width, neck profile, depth, etc. And I have to say, if a guitar player does not have an Elliott Capo, they need to experience it because they're amazing. They have, they have, um, gosh, they've got, uh, I'm trying to remember my favorite one now. I'm totally forgetting it. Um, shoot, McK the McKinney Elliott Capo, the McKinney version, I, I really enjoy. There's also the Twist version. Shout out to Tony S who actually sent one for, a, uh, for me for a wedding present, which I thought was awesome. And actually the reason it's on this very gift guide um, it's beautiful. You got to go to the Elliott website and look up their twist capos. They're gorgeous. They're highly polished stainless steel capos that are the cradle kind. So they stay on your guitar. You can't lose them. And uh, beautiful, beautiful capo and functionally incredible. Uh, these capos, you know, I'm not one for saying, you know, capos elicit amazing tone except for when I'm talking about Elliott Capos. I feel like Elliott Capos create this wonderful, uh, uh, nice sturdy bond between the strings and the fretboard and the fret that actually, do, they do elicit good tone and they're out of the way. They're smaller for uh, profile and 
they function so, so well. So Elia capos should certainly grace your list. Now, I like a bunch of different capos, and I wanna give a shout out to G7 capos, uh, both the performance capo and the heritage capo. I think those are fantastic. However, if you're looking for a capo for a specific guitar that functions like the Ferrari of capos, Elia capos are it. Uh, and, you, and you need to check them out. And if you don't have one, it should be on your list. And if you do have one and you know the joy that they create, it should be on your gift giving list for another guitar geek. Just, just keep that in mind. So that is our number one spot. Now, a quick recap of this final chunk. Coming in at three, we had Orangewood Guitars Accessory Pack at 20 bucks, everything you'd need. Uh, perfect for beginners. Uh, number two, Music Nomad as a whole uh, for the guitarist that has everything. And then number one, Elliot Capos, because they're just, awesome. It's like sitting in the, the seat of a race car and pressing the gas pedal and just going like the Memorex commercial where the guy sits in the chair and all the sound comes at him. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. Well, holy smokes, we're just cruising through. Uh, and I've got some guitar snows to let you all in on. In fact, uh, we're wrapping up our uh, Acoustic Tuesday for Vets fundraiser and some late submissions that I wanted to feature because, well, these folks contributed to a good cause and they're Acoustic Tuesday fans and guitar geeks. So I thought, you know what, let's do a quick little feature. And I've got some important news about some Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. So first up, we've got Marty F. from Western North Carolina. Carolina in the mountains. He says, this is me holding my Sigma DM2, wearing my TAC Guitars for Vets t-shirt, or sweatshirt, sorry. Uh, guitar Geeks Unite. Our next guitar snow comes from Arlington, Texas. This is Bradford M. And he says, hey, Tony, Bradford M. here. Just a line to say thank you to all of our vets and to you for giving me the opportunity to allow me and my practice buddies to help with this great work. I purchased the tee and sweatshirt, and we got five stickers for all of my friends. Guitar Geeks Uniting. Next up, we'll go to Greenville, Tennessee, and this is Joshua posing with his Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirt. Looks like a nice sunny day, pretty awesome stuff. And then we're going to head over to Newton, Pennsylvania, see Kendall K. He says, Tony, thanks for supporting this more than worthy cause. I'm not a veteran, but the peace of mind and tranquility the guitar brings me far outweigh the frustration of learning to play. Well, most of the time anyway. Tuesdays are the new Fridays. Thanks for watching, Kendall. We appreciate the picture. And then lastly, we'll head to Austin, Texas and have a look at Albert D in his Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirts. And one of the things I love about this picture is that not only did he buy one for himself, but he bought one for his six string companion, which I think is just very guitar geeky and very worthy of note. All right, well, we are cruising. I wanna visit the mailbag, a real, real tiny little arrival here in the mailbag. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I try out new strings. You know, I, I tout the Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension strings and they are the top of the heap for me. I will say without a doubt, if you were to say, Tony, you can take one kind of string to a desert island, what's it gonna be? Santa Cruz Parabolic Tension strings all the time. But I do try out other ones because if people ask me, I wanna be able to give an educated opinion. So I tried out, uh, or I'm going to try out, I should say, these Diderio uh, nickel bronze strings. And uh, the reason I'm trying these out on my acoustic guitar is because I actually use these on my Dobro, uh, my Beard uh, uh, Josh Swift model, and I really enjoy them. I enjoy the tone they offer, and I thought, you know, I'll just give them a shot on the acoustic guitar. So these came in in the mailbag, as did the book. Uh, but I already revealed that. So I guess just to be, you know, above bar, well, the book came in the mailbag as well. So thanks, John Stubbings. Uh, all right, moving on. Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention, uh, you know, I said the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirts were kind of wrapping up, and that is true. However, you can still support the Acoustic Tuesday show by purchasing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. In fact, we would welcome you to purchase Acoustic Tuesday mer merchandise, whether it be a t-shirt, a coffee mug, a sweatshirt, a hooded sweatshirt, a lady tee, uh, leggings. I, there's other stuff on there too, stuff that definitely interest more of the ladies and less of me. I'm not a big leggings guy, as you could probably imagine, uh, but all of that's on there. Uh, there's a link right beneath this episode and you can go ahead and click on that. Take a look at all that merchandise. And if you so choose to purchase a piece of Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, we would love for you to take a picture of you sporting it and submit it at AcousticLife.tv. Once you go there, there's a submit link in the top menu. Click on that and you could submit your picture dressed in your best Acoustic Tuesday merchandise and we'll feature you on an upcoming show. Now on to our artist of the week. Now this artist, well, I'm just gonna reveal it. It's the Dead Tongues. Now you might be wondering who recommended this artist, but we'll get to that in a second. First, I want you to hear a song. This one's called Road to Heaven. Yeah. 
was getting late, climbing up a gate, knocking on the door to heaven. Pays the cupboard walls, your pictures hung in all. Won't you open up my eyes to heaven? Come on, open up my eyes to heaven. If you know my life, I've been running after horizons and sky. Little death. You were on the pasture with the moon on the Dead Tongues came uh, via recommendation from Mandolin Orange. They did an Ask the Artist segment some episodes back on Acoustic Tuesday, and they said, hey, uh, some under-the-radar uh, under artists you should check out are the Dead Tongues. And I thought to myself, that's a cool name. I should check them out. And I have to say, uh, doubly impressed. I am just over the moon for the Dead Tongues. In fact, so the Dead Tongues, uh, Ryan Gustafson, uh, with some other North Carolina uh, musician types, uh, got together and recorded uh, their newest album. I'll get to that here in just a moment, but I want to read something off of his website just real quick, and I think it sums up what we just witnessed in that very music video, and that is just somebody sitting down with an acoustic guitar pouring their heart out, and I, I love it. So he, uh, the website says this, Ryan Gus recorded these songs much as they were written, and quote, sitting down with an acoustic instrument and making a song, singing and playing, it was the idea, says Gustafson. I'll follow a song to wherever it goes, but I try to keep this one in the room. This sounds like what we played, exactly what you're hearing. And I think that in and of itself is one of those things where that's the magic of acoustic music. It's it's so intimate and it's so, it's so spon spontaneous. And I love seeing that and I love hearing that. So uh, kudos to Ryan and everybody else involved in the Dead Tongues project. Now, uh, I want you to check out this next clip. This is a, a tune called Stained Glass Eyes. And I think you'll see why I selected it here in just a moment. Here's the clip. that a visually interesting filming location sound wise it's eerily it's just it's eerily it's eerie um it, i was gonna say eerily creepy it, it's it, it i don't need, i want to know how they mic that I, I feel like they might have put the microphone at the other end of the tunnel and ryan was at the other end of the tunnel just playing away and i thought to myself this is so cool you got to check out the full clip and of course you can see that at acousticlife.tv forward slash at 119 now there's one more song i want to leave you with and this is uh, more of the the collaboration or the collaborative nature of the dead tongues and this song is entitled won't be long let's have a listen <laughs>
to the guitar, to the harmonies, and to something I never thought I'd say, to the flute. That song, Top to Bottom, is awesome. And when I first saw the flute, I was like, what am I getting myself into? What's happening here? And shame on me for, for judging right out of the gate like that, because wow, we, you, what a complete cool sound. And that song is the one, that's the first one I heard, and I wanted to save it to last because it really got me hooked. And uh, I'm just really happy that the uh, Mandolin Orange recommended them. In fact, um, so cool to hear from an art, another artist who they're listening to and who's under the radar, and then to kind of help build them up uh, and expose them to all of you acoustic guitar geeks and acoustic music lovers. Uh, so speaking of acoustic music lovers, here, it's a couple, here are a couple of albums that I think you should check out from the Dead Tongues. Uh, their most recent release in 2018, uh, Unsung Passage, and then an album with a title that I particularly love, uh, Montana, released in 2016. And then lastly, the album Desert. Uh, so definitely uh, put those in your, uh, your album shelves. Put those in your Spotify saved library or your iTunes. However you can you know, consume music. I would recommend the, um, the analog route, vinyl records. But hey, I'm not one to judge. As long as you're listening, I'm happy. Uh, holy smokes, that brings us, holy, we're back to the Guitar Geek Trivia. It's time for your answer, but quickly, let's go ahead and recap the question so we're all on the same page. Which of the following methods of abuse slash accident have the Martin D28, formerly owned by Clarence White, currently owned by Tony Rice, been subject to? Was it shot by a pellet gun, run over by a car, caught in a flood, or fallen off of a stage? Well, if you answered A, B, or C, <laughs> you're absolutely correct. It was shot by a pellet gun, run over by a car, and caught in a flood. Let me explain. Yes, three of the four accidents and acts of abuse have happened to Tony Rice's Holy Grail Martin D28. In Clarence White's possession, it was shot by a pellet gun after not being played for a bit due to horrible action. After a Kentucky Colonel's gig in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Clarence accidentally ran over both of his Martins at D D18 and the D28 while at the wheel of the group's van. The D28 suffered only a sidecracker too, and since the colonels were on their way to Ann Arbor, Michigan, they brought both guitars to repairman extraordinaire Herb David, who worked day and night to get them back into service. Now check this out. In March of 1993, Tony and Pam Rice, this is when the guitar was in Tony's possession, is in Tony's possession, they were living in Crystal River, Florida, not just near the water, but right at the water's edge when a tropical storm slammed into the Gulf Coast. They were awakened in the middle of the night by emergency personnel who insisted they evacuate. Uh, evacuate immediately, without so much as a moment to gather up personal belongings. When the sun rose a few hours later, Rice begged a neighbor to retrieve the Martin from his flooded home. It was underwater in its case for at least an hour and a half. Underwater. Totally submerged, but the case wasn't waterproof, so it was totally saturated. According to Rice, it took about five years for the guitar to sound like itself again, and with the help of Harry Sparks and Snuffy Smith, both expert repairmen, the D28 was brought back to life. Quite the, um, quite the uh, trials and tribulations of that D28. Uh, probably, I would say, the most famous D28 in existence. Um, makes you think twice about, you know, the little nicks and dings you have on your guitar, thinking, man, well, I guess it wasn't in a flood, and it didn't, you know, get run over by a car. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Well, I want to thank you all for watching today, and I hope that these little items we discussed make it to your holiday wish list. Don't forget to cash in on those promo codes. Uh, you can find those all at AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT119. Now, let's take a quick sneak peek into next week to see what's going to happen on Acoustic Tuesday. You're going to learn about a DI with a tuner that actually works, and hint, hint, I may or may not have mentioned it already on today's show. And we're going to listen to a musical duo that spreads the history and tradition of all things blues. And we're going to watch a workhorse of a documentary. In fact, it's a guitar documentary about a workhorse. You'll get all the details next week on Acoustic Tuesday. I want to thank you for watching this week on Acoustic Tuesday. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv so you can do a deep dive on all things guitar geek. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers to you.